to deal with confidence intervals where we have less than 30 data points, we can't use a Z distribution, so we're going to use the T distribution, which is very similar in nature. Uh, the T, however, is different depending upon the sample size. So as the sample size changes, so does the value of that critical value. Now, the T distribution looks very much like the Z distribution. It has uh, the, the typical mountain shape. It just tends to change as the sample size gets larger. Each of them have a mean of zero, so that will be the same. The difference, however, is the, uh, the standard deviation of the T distribution will change with the sample size, whereas for the standard normal distribution, it always has a standard deviation of one. So sigma is one for standard normal. And as n increases, as n gets sufficiently large, the student, the student T distribution will basically become the normal distribution. This formula may look very similar to you, uh, what we used before. The Z is what we used before. Now we're going to use a T, and that's equivalent to the value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So the value of X bar would be X bar. The expected value of X bar would be the mean mu. And the standard deviation of X bar is sigma over square root of N, but we don't have sigma, so we will be using S. So this is what we're going to use to find the critical values. And the critical values are going to be, have the same, almost the same notation as Z. We're going to have T of alpha over 2 instead of Z of alpha over 2. Now, something we need to know is degrees of freedom. All right, so as um, it basically your, your values can vary depending upon what N is. So the degrees of freedom for this teaser distribution will be n minus 1 as we're using it now. All right, so we take the value of the total amount of data points, subtract, subtract 1 from that, and that will be our degrees of freedom. So here's a little cutoff picture of what a T looks like. It you know continues to go up and has the uh, same sort of bell shape that the normal distribution does. Now, <coughs> Using this chart, we're going to look for the area in the specific right tail. That's what all of these values are, values in the right tail. And you can look at the bottom, and these are going to correspond to different confidence levels for a two-tailed test. So if you recall, our 95% uh, confidence interval for the Z had the value at 1.96 when 2.5% was on either side. We go down this 0.025 for the tail probability, and we come out to, as n is sufficiently large, this is an infinity symbol, 1.96 will be the value. So for 95%, the z is 1.96, and uh, as uh, n is sufficiently large, if we're just dealing with smaller values, we look at the degrees of freedom on the left, and then we correspond to the different values. So if we're doing 95% and Say we have an n value of 10, we would look at the number 9 on the left for degrees of freedom, which is 10 minus 1. Scoot over to 0.025, they intersect at 2.262. And that's how you'd find that critical value. Now, as I mentioned before, each of the confidence intervals is going to have three basic pieces to it. The point estimator on the left always the center of the confidence interval. In this case, it's still x bar. Plus or minus the critical value, we're going to use the t distribution for small samples for the mean mu. And so we use t of alpha over 2 for that using the t distribution chart. The standard deviation of x bar is sigma over square root of n, but we're going to use the s. We won't have sigma. And again, t, t of alpha over 2 is based on n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So the right side of, of this problem, the right side of the formula, is the error, and our point estimator is on the left. Our requirements, we need a random sample from the target population. That's going to be the case for any sort of confidence interval or test that we do. And for this one specifically, we have to make sure that we are pulling data from a data set that's at least approximately normal. We have to have that as a consideration. Otherwise, the t-distribution is not a good uh, good use. Alright, so here's an example. 
Uh, so we have a value for x bar, 97.94. We have a value for s, the standard deviation, and there are 16 total sample points. This value is less than 30, so we're going to use the t distribution. We need this other piece of information. x has to be approximately normal or normal. So this is the formula that we're going to use. Now, we're going to be able to plug in the 97.94 for x bar, the 12.65 for s, and 16 for n, but we need to calculate this t of alpha over 2. We've got two situations here, two problems. One, 80% confidence interval, which means 10% is on either side. So alpha is 0.2, alpha divided by 2 is 0.1. 95% confidence interval for the mean mu means that we have an alpha of 0.05, alpha divided by 2 of 0.025. So we're going to go and check those out with our degrees of freedom being 15. So 15 degrees of freedom on the left, 80%. You can see down here we got 0.1 in either side. So we're going to go to 1.341. 10% in the right tail, 15 degrees of freedom, 1.341. When we do the 95%, we're going to move over to the 0.025, so 2.131 is the value we're going to use there. All right, so our first value, the 1.341. Again, we're going to uh, calculate the right-hand side of this formula to get this value 4.24. The left bound or the lower bound is our point estimate minus this. So we're going to do the, the subtraction first and that's going to come out to 93.7. When we add it it's going to be 102.18. The inference is, is the same as we did with the large sample. So we are in this case 80 percent confident the true um, population mean will fall between 93.7 and 102.18 as we change the confidence uh, confidence level and the interval will be 95%, we will put in instead of 1.341, 2.131, so we've increased our confidence level. And we are 95% confident the true, purport, uh, true mean will be between 91.2 and 104.68. So you have a T distribution there. Um, some of the TI-84s have uh, an inverse t function that you can use instead of the chart. I will show you how to do that for those of you with the TID4s. The TID3s do not have that function, however.